morning my friends welcome back to Sunday School so what have I got here I have an Advent wreath because it is the first week of Advent and what is Advent well Advent is the four Sundays the four weeks of before Christmas that's right Christmas it is almost Christmas time and here in our church what we do is we have a wreath which symbolizes eternity there's no beginning and there's no end and then we have four different candles that we light one every Sunday and then we have three purple candles and one pink candle and the first candle that we're going to light is the purple candle and it stands for hope now I'm not going to actually light it light it but that's what we would do in the church so when you come to mass you will see that we have a wreath with candles or maybe you have a wreath at home that you and your parents have made or have in your house to symbolize Advent and it is the beginning of the Christmas season. And when you uh, come to church, if or if you come to church, when we can come to church, you'll see that the priest is wearing purple. Now we've talked about the different colors that the priest wears during the different times of the year. And he wears green during ordinary time. And then there's white or gold during Christmas or Easter. And then we have red during Pentecost, which is coming up next year. And then we have two times of the year that we wear that he wears purple. And do you know what those two times are? Well, one is Advent, you know that. But what is the other time? I know you know. Lent. That's right, Lent, when we're waiting for Easter. So here we're waiting again. We're waiting and we're thinking about the things that we care about and want to think about in our hearts before Jesus arrives. And the white candle stands for Jesus, and he is this burst of joy into the darkness. And that is what all the candles are for. So that is our Advent wreath. And as we're getting ready for Christmas, we're going to start with our Sunday School story, which is called Mortimer's Christmas Manger. And then we're going to read uh, the Gospel reading. Okay, so let's get started with our Sunday School story, which is Mortimer's Christmas Manger. In a big house lived a wee mouse named Mortimer. He dwelled in a dark hole under the stairs. Hmm, that does not look cozy at all, does it? No. Nobody ever noticed little Mortimer, and Mortimer liked it that way. But he didn't like his hole. Too cold, too cramped, too creepy, squeaked Mortimer. Each day he snuck out and crept about looking for crumbs and tidbits. One day... Mortimer spied something new, and what he spied was wonderful. He saw a huge tree covered with twinkling lights and nestled on top was a bright shining star, but something even better than the tree itself sat next to it on the table. Mortimer sighed with the delight. A house just my size. Do you see what he's talking about? It's a nativity scene, right? Do you think he, a little mouse should live there? I don't know. Let's find out. But the house was so high and Mortimer was so low. I'll climb up the tree, said Mortimer. It made a perfect ladder for a mouse. Up, 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 Mortimer climbed. Down, 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 ornaments crashed. <laughs> I think Mortimer's making a little bit of a mess. Finally, he reached the table. Perfect, said Mortimer. Not cold, not cramped, not creepy, cozy. But who are you? Mortimer had never seen people so small, almost as small as himself. He'd never seen such strange animals either. Tap, 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 Mortimer knocked, but no one answered. Tap, 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 no one moved an inch. I see, Mortimer squeaked. You aren't real, only statues. And so Mortimer lugged, and Mortimer tugged, and one by one he dragged the statues out. When he reached the smallest statue, he saw it was a baby. A baby in a wooden bed, just Mortimer's size. There's no room for you here, Mortimer said. Out you go. <laughs> he pushed the baby out. Then into bed crawled Mortimer, and he fell asleep in the soft, warm hay. Who did Mortimer push out? Hmm, that doesn't seem good. The next day, as Mortimer crept about, he found good things to eat. Cookie crumbs, fruitcake morsels, and spicy peppermint candy. But when Mortimer scampered back up to his new home, the statues were set up again. No, 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 squeaked Mortimer. This won't do. There's no room for me. And so, 
Mortimer lugged and Mortimer tugged until all the statues were out. And stay out, he said. Then into bed crawled Mortimer and he fell fast asleep in the soft, warm hay. But each day when Mortimer scurried about, the statues were set up again. Look who's setting them up, the little girl and little boy. And Mortimer always lugged and tugged them back out. Then one day, Mortimer set out and saw that big people were gathered around the tree. He couldn't go out there, so he hid among the statues. And a man started talking. Mortimer listened, and what he heard was wonderful. Since it's Christmas Eve, I shall tell the Christmas story, said the man. A long time ago, in a little town called Bethlehem, Mortimer heard about people named Joseph and Mary and a bright shining star. He heard about shepherds watching their flocks by night and traveling wise men. The man continued, and there was no room for them at the inn. So he's telling the Christmas story, right? Then Mortimer heard about a baby, a baby who was born in a stable and had no real bed but slept in a wooden manger, a baby born to save the world. And his name shall be called Jesus, said the man. Mortimer looked at the bright shining star on the tree. He looked at his new home and his new bed. He looked at the statues. Last of all, he looked at the baby. I see, sighed Mortimer. You aren't just any statue. You are the statue of Jesus. Mortimer sniffed. Mortimer snuffled. A tear rolled down his furry cheek. There was no room for you at the inn, but I know where there is room, he said. And so, what do you think he's going to do? Mortimer lugged and Mortimer tugged, and soon he dragged all of the statues back to where they belonged. Last of all, he laid the baby in the manger. This belongs to you, he said. And Mortimer smiled. You look warm and cozy now. Oh, that was really nice of Mortimer, don't you think? Yeah. There was no place for Mortimer to go except back to the cold, cramped, creepy hole. As Mortimer scuttled down the tree, he said a prayer. Jesus, you were born to save the world. Perhaps you could also bring me a home. And then Mortimer spied something new. What he spied was wonderful. Mortimer sighed with delight. A house just my size, and there were no statues in sight, and so... Mortimer moved right in. Thank you, Jesus, said Mortimer. You've made room for me, too. What did he move into? A gingerbread house. That looks like a delicious place to live. I think he's very happy there. And that's the end of our story. But we're just introducing the story of Christmas because we're starting our Christmas season. So let's see what the Gospel reading has to say. Now this is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Watch out and be ready. You don't know when the time will come. It is like what happens when a man goes away for a while and places his servant in charge of everything. He tells each of them what to do, and he orders the watchman to be on their guard. So be on your guard. You do not know when the master of the house will come back. It could be in the evening or at midnight or before dawn or in the morning. But if he comes suddenly, don't let him find you asleep. I tell everyone just what I have told you. Be on your guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, it does seem like in the last few stories that we've heard from the Gospels that Jesus is telling us to watch out, to be mindful, to think about to what we need to do and be on our guard and be ready for what he wants us to do. And that's Advent. We're waiting and we're watching and we're waiting for Jesus, the light, to enter the world. So that's part of our Advent time. So what is our Advent craft? Well, good thing you asked. We are going to make an Advent wreath. So what do you need to make the Advent wreath? Well, you need four toilet paper holders, one sheet of green construction paper, one sheet of pink construction paper, one sheet of orange construction paper, and one sheet of purple construction paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our toilet paper roll and we're going to lay it down on our piece of paper. And then we're going to cut right along the middle so that the toilet paper roll, it's just the size of the toilet paper roll. I'll show you with the pink piece of paper that I have here. 
See, I made this cut. And then we're gonna roll the pink piece of paper all around the toilet paper hole and close it with tape. And I've done that here. Closed it with tape. And I did that with three purple ones and one pink one. And you can see with the purple one, I cut a little orange piece out and made a flame. Just a little orange piece because we're lighting one candle for Advent this year. So that's for this week. Next week we'll light another purple candle. So these are my purple and pink candles. Now how did I make the base? Well, I took a piece of paper and I folded it in half. My green piece of paper. And then let's see, what did I do with my scissors? Aha, I hid them from myself. So then I made a circle, a half a circle. Which I cut out here. Now have your moms and dads help you with the circle. If you don't normally use scissors, make sure moms and dads are helping you with your circle. And then you need to cut a circle inside as well for our wreath. So you see that makes two circles. And then when you open it up, it's kind of round. It's not a perfectly round, but it's kind of round. And that makes our wreath. And then you can put your candles on top of it. And every week we can put a new piece of orange. When we cut our orange flame, we just cut a little piece out. Just a little piece like that. Just like that. And you can tape it to the inside when we need to do that. Now, right now we're on the first week of Advent, so we only need one candle lit. But next week we'll light that one. So I'm going to save these for our advent here in our classroom, but we, you can have make them on your own and you can do this yourself. You can use the advent wreath that your moms and dads might have already bought and then you can go ahead and look at that. Or I'll put in a coloring page so that you can color an advent wreath. Now, whatever you do and if uh, in any of the crafts that you do, I would love for you to send me a picture of them to Sunday School at stmartinoftours.com. That address is in the description below and have your moms or dads take a picture and send it to me. I'd love to see what you're doing at home for Sunday school. So before we go, I want us to hear a song from Mr. Martinez. So let's put our listening ears on and hear what he has for us today. Hi, everybody. This is Steve here. We're going to do some worship songs. And I think you might be familiar with this one. It's called Awesome God. All right, we're going to use our bodies. God gave us our bodies to praise the Lord. So we're going to start with this L. Okay, it means Lord in sign language. You're going to go, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Okay, let's try it out. It goes something like this. Our God is an awesome
Great job, guys. God bless you. Remember singing, it's praying twice. Jesus, that was a great song. You guys did a wonderful job. So Christmas season is starting. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. And I will see you again next week. Before we go, let's do our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for giving us Advent. And thank you for bringing us together today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.